Welcome to this one. So we're going to start by creating a new Redshift material. Then name this metal. So we're going to put this, plug it in to the shader box. So I'm going to use my um, Redshift test. Okay, so if I fire up this now, if I render this, this is what I'm going to get, just like I always got in the old tutorial. So we're going to have this. So because we want to make a metallic object, this doesn't really have issues, very simple. So what we, what I'll do for a metallic object is to bring the diffuse to zero. So it's going to be all black. Then the next thing is to come down. So, so let me bring this up. I want to be seeing my okay, so yeah, we're fine. So it's to come to the reflection um I our value, we change this to a very high number, so maybe 100 and just try 99, still the same thing, anyways. But right now you see what I have, it's very um shiny, so we need to break off all this um reflection so we're going to introduce roughness to it so as we start bringing up roughness you start seeing this being brushed off and looking all polished so i'm going to start with this okay so this is not necessary anyway so i'll start with this and work my way through so right now this um metal is too white, I need to break this off. So I'm going to use a map to change the roughness instead of just using this float value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this node editor, just type in RAM. So I'm going to drag this over here, then bring the RAM. If I plug this RAM into this, and go to the reflection roughness. We're going to get back to this. So you notice what we have, this is so white. So what we're going to do is to use this ramp to change how we're going to map that. But before we even start introducing the ramp, there is um, something I need to do. So I'm going to get this off. So we're back to the initial. So I don't want this um, surface. I want to have an effect such that it has been touched over a period of time. So you have some smudges and um, grunges and thumbprints. So for me to do that, I'm going to use my map. So I'll just bring in a map that I've been using. So I'll drag this map over here. So once the map get loaded, I'm going to plug that into the um, roughness channel so we'll see what we have with that so now that this is here so i'm going to plug this is what i'm going to plug into the base reflection roughness so as soon as i do that this is what you're going to get so you see you can start to see the sound prints and all that but this mapping is too large so what i'm going to do like you know i'm going to use my user scale scalar data so i'm going to plug this into this scale so everything turns white just because i need to scale this up so if i make this one we get back to the initial position so we'll start let's try to start changing the value to see a, a sweet spot for us so um see this is still too much so let's try four Okay, so I think I'm liking this. So let's see three. No, four is kind of. Let's try five and see. I think that four is cool because um, I'm liking the way this um, comes somewhere here. So, so once you have this, we will now introduce our ramp because right now um, this is not. Um, really realistic like that. We need to use the ramp to reduce the effect. So plug this into the ramp that I brought in earlier. 
and put it back into this reflection. So we are going to get back to the initial position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to change the ramp value. Remember, anywhere you have black, it's going to be very shiny, and anywhere you have white, it's going to be um, brushed off, so it's going to be rough. So this rough part is too rough, so we just reduce the white to somewhat here. So start to have that effect. So we don't want too much of this. So I'm going to bring this black, bring it up a little bit. So we don't have too much of a polished surface. And also for that ramp, if we bring this up, we start to see that it starts to become rough again. So um, I think we'll stop here for a moment and start to introduce something else. That, that will help us further break this reflection. And that is introducing the bump. So we're going to bring in a bump map. So it's more of a scratch that I want to use. So you know the scratch that I use all the time. So I think I'm going to use this. If this doesn't work, I'll try this. So let me bring this up. Um, let me bring this also out. So I can just switch them. So once I have these guys, the next thing is to bring the bump map. So I'll just type bump, bring in the bump map over here, drag this from here into this input of the bump map. So put it as an input, then drag this over to overall and bump input. So we're going to start to see this. So this first off is too large, so we're going to introduce scale also so we'll just drag this let's start with this value and see if it's fine okay i think this might be fine four so let's try five six okay i think i will go with this um six or five I think this five is two. Okay, so I think I'll go with this six. So once you're done with this, but right now you notice that this bump input is kind of um, too strong. But before then, let's see the effects of the other one. So we can. So let me just duplicate that. So we know the one to pick and drag this over to this input. So let's see. Or Okay, so this seem too much or too small. So what do we do if we bring this up? Let's try four and see what we get to have. Okay, so I think we'll just work with this. That should give us the initial bump that we had. Okay, so we have this, but right now the bump um, intensity is too much. So we'll start to dial this down. So if we try 0 0.3, let's see. Mm, it's still too much. 0 0.1, let's see. This is much actually, so we'll try 0 0.04. Okay, so we're beginning to come down, but I still do not want this still intense in my own. So if we try 0 0.0, it let's see what we have. So right, so right now I'm beginning to get the feel of a natural scratch, which is not um. So I think we could still go down. This might be too much. So let's try one and see. Okay, we're beginning to lose the scratch. So let's put one five. Okay, so I'm having some scratch somewhere here. So you can see here at this edge somewhere here. And also if you look down, the scratch is so intense. So 
we i think i will go look so we can already see that i'm having a scratch so this scratch looks so nice so um really that is um all you have for this if i bring this over into this so let's see what this gives us it doesn't look nice so just get that out okay i think i'll go with the first one that's for me it looks way better so let me clean up all this so i'm going to delete this so that's how to do that so if you now want to change the color of your bomb so what you will do is to just um, sorry the color of your metal so let's say for instance you want to do um a gold all you need to do is just go to your rs material go to the reflection color very important just change that to um a goldish um, golden yellowish color so just try that first and that will give you effects you know if this is Okay, so you could just look at particular value that you want. So if you know the HBS value of um, gold, you could just put that there and that should give you what you want. Also, if you were going for copper, same thing, just change the color to some other um, color that will give you that of a copper. So let's try this first and see. Okay, so I think this is too intense. So let's bring this a little bit down. And let's take this up and see. Okay, so this looks um, better. It looks so neat and all that. So, so you can start to see the effect you, you get to have. All, all you just need to do is just change the reflection color and it gives you this. So there's one more thing I just want to add as a bonus. And even though as we've seen this scratch and all that, there are times you would want to have um, another kind of scratch at the um, junction at these edges around your objects, more like it has been used and you have more intense scratch. And how you would do that or go about that is introducing another um, uh, noise texture, another scratch texture. But what if you want to use noise in C4D? So that's we can also use shader, C4D shader. So if I go to shader, I have C4D shader. Then for the C4D shader, I need to quickly um, set how this looks. So I would plug this into the um, into this. Um, material here so that I will quickly see what I have. So if I plug this into the surface for a moment. So maybe I might need to get close. Okay, so right now we can't put this. That's one thing with um, um, red sheets. You cannot put C4D shader directly into um, RS material or the output. So what you do instead is to plug this shader into a texture map before you can output it into it. So that's very important. So that's why it wasn't um, unable to place this shader into any of this RS material or the output. So what I would do is just come over to this place and search for um, texture. So let me just quickly stop this for a moment and just type texture and bring the texture out. So I'm going to plug this into the input section and then this will now come into this. All right, so you can see we can now use this um, our C4D shader, All right? So, so I want to quickly get fast with this. So for the C4D shader, if I quickly Play this out. So let me take this to um, 40 so we can just see this. So if I start interactive rendering, so this is what we get to have. It's going to be black because we don't have anything in this um, shader. So that's where we need to select the shader and start to change. So if I add 
go to the shader and add a noise to it. We we'll start to see the way the noise is. So for me to change this noise, I'll have to go to the um, attribute manager. So I'll change this noise to any type of noise you want. So I think I'll go with local and that will give me this effect. Then I'm going to reduce this scale. So let's try 50 to start with. So we can start to see what we have. So I think I can still go down 20 and then increase the um, lower clip and reduce the higher clip just for me to have um, contrast in this. Okay, so um, for this, I could still go down, take this a little bit, change this um, color. So we have that. So if we have this, so let's still go down five and increase this contrast. But we could just go to the contrast and just bring that up a little bit. So this is um, what we get to have here. So I could still come down and bring this color down. So just playing around to get the actual. So once I'm done with this, I could now, I will now come in and change the scale. Cause right now, so I think I'm still going to introduce this and let's see what will happen here. So I think, so I cannot, do that. So I think we just work with this. And now that we have this, I need to bring this noise, make it, bring it to the edge of this. So if, if I go to this texture, I can still reduce this texture. So if I bring this to two by two, it's going to further decrease this. So if we go to three, three. So I have this noise, very small. So how can we now make this noise and add it into the, um, into the bump. So if we come here, if I replace this with this bump here, this is what we're going to have. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is, because I want to have a more intense noise for this, so I'm going to create a separate bump for it, not this bump. So I'm going to just leave this back here and create a bump um, map. So I just drag this bump map here. So I'm going to plug this into the input section and drag this into the bump input just to quickly see the effect I get to have. So you see, I can just take this noise and bring this up again. So it reduces the noise. I think if I go to eight by eight, yeah, so this is fine. I like that. And the bump, maybe I'll bring this to 0 0.5. Mm, point. This is me just testing for me to see where I'm going to have this bump, the intensity. So I think let's stop with this first, then try and mix this bump together. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to try and mix these two bumps together. So we're going to use Bump Blender and make the main one the base input and the next one the layer one input. So if we plug this into the input, this is what we're gonna have. So if I drag this and plug this in. So right now we're not seeing the other one. We're only seeing the first one, which is the base. And the reason is because the bump weight is set to zero. So if we set this to zero, like I always said, it's going to make the base take preference over the base for the base over the other one. So that's why we're having this. If, I, if I'm to take this to one, we are going to see the layer one and not the, the base input, so it makes sense. So if I take this up, you notice that what we see instead is the layer one and bring this down. We have that. So what I want to do is to use the curvature map. map. Remember the curvature map we use in the plastic material. So I don't have time creating that. I'll just borrow that curvature map. So I'm going to go over to the plastic that I created so this is the plastic. I'm just going to quickly borrow this um, curvature 